There's a lot of games I often see nobody talk about. Sometimes it's just because people don't know about them, just like Voodoo Vince, but sometimes it's simply because they're really terrible, such as the case with Rough Trigger. Torque for Xbox is one of those games. Whether it's bad or just unknown, well, that's what I plan on finding out today. Tywak Games. I've never heard of this company. They don't even have a Wikipedia page. The team was supposedly made from people who used to work at Ubisoft Montpellier, even working on the first two Rayman games. A funny story about this game's development, it was being developed under Microsoft as a publisher, being planned as an Xbox exclusive launching in 2004. But Microsoft soon dropped the title after certain things just didn't work out, and the team was then purchased by, ironically enough, Ubisoft, the company they originally worked for. The game would remain an Xbox exclusive, but now being published under Ubisoft, being pushed back a year to 2005. That was pretty late in the Xbox's life cycle. By then, there was a lot of other great platformers you could choose from. So with that said, why don't we see what Torque is all about. Torque, prehistoric punk. So like what now, we got like cyberpunk and steampunk and even biopunk, and I guess this is prehistoric punk, is that what this is? Okay. You know, it's also really kind of bugging me that neither Torque or the title are in the center of the screen. They're slightly to the right. Like every platformer in existence, it starts with a cutscene of sorts. Torx being held hostage as his dad is fighting the crap out of these Ooga Booga Blue Cavemen when he's kidnapped by a spooky wizard. Well, we don't really see him get kidnapped. Tork just kind of wakes up after being knocked out, and I guess the game just tells us that. And then we head straight into gameplay. And man, this is a uh, pretty bare bones. Okay, so there's a jump and a double jump. That's all you got for platforming moves. And for attacking, you've got a rapid button mashing attack and a boomerang attack. The boomerang's kind of helpful for hitting dudes over gaps, but you'll mostly just smash the X button to attack. As long as you're hitting that button, nothing's getting near you, and it's, um, really easy. That's really all there is to the controls. There's not much of a moveset here. The level design reflects that pretty badly. There's just not much to it. You go straight, jump over the raised geometry, the occasional pit, fight a dinosaur occasionally, and that's about it. Imagine Crash Bandicoot in that it's really linear, but strip it of everything that makes it fun. You get these really bland levels that don't require a shred of effort to complete. Fighting enemies is extremely tedious. You just mash the X button and charge into them. Sometimes there will be bigger enemies that'll require a little bit more strategy since they'll block your attack but if you manage to get the first strike with a boomerang, you could just spam that until they're dead. I don't really like how the boomerang feels. It always seems to get thrown one more time than I wanted to. I'll stop mashing the button and he doesn't stop throwing it until a full second later, as if the inputs stack to an extent. Battling enemies will gradually fill a special meter. Once full, you can transform into one of three forms, depending on the level you're playing. The first one's a Yeti. With incredible strength, you can create shockwaves that'll destroy anything within a a limited radius. The second's an armadillo that can do this sort of homing attack at enemies. His standard attack is also faster and wider range than Torx, making him useful for taking out a lot of enemies. And the last is this big flying squirrel thing. It can jump much higher and has a dash move that can knock out enemies. Throughout each stage, there'll be a handful of entryways you can only access in one of these forms. These hide extra lives and lots of collectibles you can grab to score points. Yeah. Points. Each level has a fair share of tiki heads. Think the crates from Crash Bandicoot. Smashing these and grabbing what's inside will score you points. You're free to try to get the best score possible in each level. What does that get you? Well, there's four bonus levels. You'll unlock each one after getting your total score up to a certain amount. They're not worth playing. The first one is, uh, d you remember, uh, that frickin' Beaver Bother game from DK64? It's that, but with dinosaurs instead of beavers and trampolines and... Okay! 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 Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, it's just, you know, beaver bother. Bothers me! <laughs> When I realized the minigames are garbage, I had absolutely no incentive to get a good score in each level. Which is unfortunate, because that's more or less the driving factor behind this game. 
They put all these alternate routes and mini branch away paths that lead to goodies for getting a high score. I found myself ignoring these more and more as the game went on. I had no incentive to explore them. I also started skipping combat most of the time, just running past all the enemies, because I also lost incentive to go out of my way to build up that meter to use the super forms, because all you need the super forms for, aside from making the combat easier, is opening up these hidden rooms. The further I got, the less I cared about every nook and cranny they put in these levels. Which is ironic, because the level design actually gets kinda better as the game goes on. See, it's just the first world that's prehistoric themed. You battle dinosaurs, cavemen, and it's all super flat and bland, but the second world takes place in a different time, the medieval era. I found that kind of jarring, expecting a game that's entirely prehistory themed and then warping forward to the Middle Ages randomly. There's a shaman named Yawk who will help you travel through time. He serves as the game's guide, giving you tutorials whenever you learn a new form. I did not edit that at all. He actually repeats the line that often. Flash with your claws. And what's with that voice acting? Everyone in this game acts as if they're in a parody of something. Orgus may try and kidnap you too. You must go to the castle of Wuppergada. Anyway, once you're in the Middle Ages, you can access another set of levels from the hub world. One thing I kinda do like is that you get to pick the order in which you do each batch of stages, kinda like Mega Man. This is also where the game starts to introduce more mechanics, like climbing ropes. It gives the levels a much needed vertical depth to combat the groveling blandness of the first world's flat ass levels. The third world's future themed, and by that I think the game means factory themed, you know, lots of machinery and whatnot. Definitely not something I would call future. The stages in this world have a lot more gaps and thinner platforms further upping the challenge, but despite that, Torque never manages to be actually challenging. It's an extremely easy game, I pretty much plowed through the whole thing effortlessly. I'd say the game's biggest problem is that the levels are way too long. Even when running through as fast as I could just to get them over with, levels can last from 15 to 20 minutes each, even longer if you're actually trying trying to collect everything for the high score. And then there's the boss fights, which vary, I mean, one has this lame flying and shooting segment which I always hate seeing in platformers, you know, like Rayman 3. The second one's okay, you have to attack these gargoyle statues to destroy a shield and then you get to fight them head to head in the second phase. But the game's third boss can eat a bag of dicks. The first phase is fine, you have to destroy his big machine, kinda similar to the first phase of the second boss. That's fine, that's okay, but fighting him head on in the second phase is where I really started to lose my patience. It must have taken me like an hour to beat this guy. I kept dying over and over because he throws out way too many of these shock bombs all at once, making it impossible to dodge his attacks without getting hit by one. And what's worse is you have to hit one of these shock bombs into him to attack him, and timing that right in between his attacks is so hard to do. And yeah, that's right, this again is unedited gameplay footage. Jesus Christ, and I thought Sonic Adventure was bad with repeating lines. Get a load of this! Get a load of this! Ironically enough, he looks just like Eggman. Seriously, that's one for one. This is ridiculous. You will hear this over and over and over and over throughout the entire battle. He never stops. Weirdly enough, you get another boss battle right after the final boss. It's a little better. You'll have to selectively defeat the enemies around you trying to get into the correct form when you power up than using the super move or whatever. Do that four times and he's toast. The game ends with Torque being reunited with his dad and that's it. Credits. Okay, I thought there's gonna be a little bit of a exposition or, you know, satisfying conclusion, but no, it's just... Hey dad! Hey Torque! That's it. This is the most painfully mediocre game I've ever played. It doesn't really do a whole lot wrong in regards to programming or the controls or overall level design, but it completely lacks anything interesting to make the levels fun whatsoever. It just might be the least interesting game I've ever talked about on this channel. 
I guess that's why people don't talk about it, because there's hardly anything to talk about. It's just a generic, plain as rice platformer. I don't recommend playing this game. Not because it's particularly awful, but because you just won't get anything out of it. And besides, when you're playing an Xbox platformer, you could be playing one of these.